Hey guys, I'm LT. Scooter here, man on the inside. Nick, Sam, Mikey. So what we got the opportunity to do this weekend is we came out and we got some video videos done. We wanted to do some nice stuff. We spent a weekend camping. We got our camping. Uh, Don't tell them about up. the top secret testing we've been doing. And we've been doing some testing on some stuff. Some of these are what you're going to see are some prototypes we've been working on. Some one-offs here and there, but some of the things that we like. We thought we'd do a video on what three LTWKs do we like? Kind of like what were you saying earlier, the Nesmic three in a sense. Sort of, yeah. Like in a sense. Our maybe, maybe not three. all the way, but like what would what the three knives I grab and go would be? And these are my personal three knives. One rides on my Jeep and the other two, one rides on my backpack every day. And then one rides on my hip every day. They're in my pocket. So, uh -huh. how about I start? Go, buddy. Go ahead. Okay, so my big three LTWKs that I would carry. Number one, for my big piece, no doubt the Overland Machete. This rides on the tailgate of my Jeep. It is a fantastic piece to just do about anything with. I mean, gosh, I like this thing a lot. Used it a fair amount. It is a great piece. So, I think my big knife is going to be the Machete. Okay. okay, so that's that's my number one big knife. That's one that's actually my, still on my shopping list. Oh yeah, I like that one a lot. It needs to be off your shopping list? And, and, mm. and in your uh, Jeep, buddy. I'll work on that. Number two is the knife I have carried probably more than anything uh, ever, because this was one of the first knives we ever made as LTWK, and it is my Genesis and A2 Scandi. I love this knife. I cannot leave home without it. It rides in my backpack. If I'm down to farm working or doing something, it goes on my hip. It's with me every single day. You won't catch me without this knife. I like this knife. It fits me just right. I feel like I can do whatever I need to do with this knife. So that's kind of like my big knife, the machete, my, my bush knife, let's say, the four inch, four and a half inch range, is my mm -hmm. Genesis. Now my everyday carry in and out of the shop is our Gambler. We've made 16 of these. This is in D2, 1.8, that is a liner lock. Mine has black paper micarta that's polished, titanium liners. Uh, we are still developing this knife, but I've been carrying this since, when did we get them done? It was right at the end of November, so, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's going to be coming up on a year that I've been carrying this knife, and I absolutely love it. It does. It rides in my pocket every single day. It is my go-to. It's been solid. It does all the little tasks from sharpening pencils to opening boxes. You know, matter of fact, all weekend it's been cutting my lunch. You know, so mm -hmm. this Good is the life. one. So those are my three: the Gambler, the Genesis and Scandi, and the Overland Machete. That's that's for me. Good job. Uh, for me, it would be something even older in design: the Bushcrafter. This particular one is a flat grind in A2. Keep it in a, a leather sheath, and this is my go-to field knife, bushcraft knife. So in the within that sheath, I'll have a fire steel, some paracord uh, with a ranger band on it, like uh, I, we've showed in some other videos. It's a go-to. You can see on the I don't know if you can see that on the side. I've been striking fires with it with the fire steel. It stays nice and sharp. But this is something I can sharpen in the field, but still holds a good edge. It's a fantastic all-around knife. Won't ever not be without this knife. That's number one. That one's off the trade list? Yeah. <laughs> number two will be a small EDC fixed blade and preferably some Kydex because this is quite versatile. I can put this in my pocket, add some paracord. It can be a neck knife. It can be a quick deploy out of your pocket. It has the slide lock on it for different carry. You can put a tech lock on here, I can put it on a backpack. This can go anywhere with you depending on how you carry it. No one will even know you have it. And I, I prefer this over uh, a folder if I can get away with it. However, like LT, every day I have this little baby in my pocket. It doesn't ever leave my pocket. This is the Gambler also in Orange G10. So it is always in my right front pocket, per Scooter's man rules, right? Do we all know those, right? Oh, Cash I've heard them. in the left front pocket, wallet in the right rear, and your EDC products in your 
right front pocket. You forgot your leather belt. And well, that's a given. I'm so sorry. And a leather belt for stropping. So if you ever want a mug scooter, you know exactly <laughs> where everything is. Try it. <laughs> you ain't getting this off my hands without a fight. <laughs> Those are my big three. What you got, Nick? Pretty good job. Yeah, good job. Thank you. So for me, my favorite wood setup is I have my Scandi GNS Desert Ironwood Mosaic Pins 3V. That's my go-to all around. Fancy. For hanging out in the woods. Then piggybacked onto that leather sheath is my small Northern Hunter. Also in Desert Ironwood with Mosaic Pins, Flat Grind, AEBL. And if I'm just hiking, I really love my Cam Rat. Now this is a knife that we make for Ben and Jason, Lester River Bushcraft. Ben's, Ben's Backwoods. backwoods. Ben's yeah. Backwoods, yep. So that's Scandi. Uh, these are offered in 01. This is a custom color because I got permission from the guys to make it that way. Uh, but yeah, it's on, it rides in the molly sheath on my chest rig like this. It's always handy, very convenient. I love it. Nice. So there's my three. Very good. Sam. Well, I'm going to start off with the one that I carry with me every day. Just like Scott and LT, I've got my Gambler. And uh, it's got the black paper micarta. But, uh, you never know when you got a cheesecake you got to cut. So you always have to have a good knife on you to cut that That's cheesecake. Right. That's important to me. <laughs> so I always keep this in my pocket you never miss every day cheesecake. of the week. You don't miss cheesecake. General Mattis would be so proud of you. Well, it's important. I mean, for real. So the knife that I carry in the woods when I'm hunting, my all-time favorite is the large workhorse in a flat grind. It's fantastic for processing game out in the field. I love it. I can get my finger out to the edge of the blade so I always know where the point's at when I can't see what I'm doing. It's got a really comfortable in the hand. It's just it's my, my go-to for when I'm out doing woodsy things. Nice. And traditional solid. Mm, that's one of my favorite company. patterns as well. Yep. And then the big knife that I carry, I keep it in the truck, mounted to the molly panel on the back seat. What you got there? This just so happens to be a Latin oh. style machete. Nice. <laughs> I love this thing. It's it's incredible. It feels great in the hand. It's a little bit longer than the Overland machete. It's got a good swing to it. Just like the other one, you know, it's good and flexible. This one has seen some love, that's for oh, sure. Yes, that's I, got miles. We've lopped down many a tree with that. I have one. put this through its paces. Let's compare. Now that knife is still on prototyping stage. They are not available. Yeah, but very but it cool. Is, it's something that we built, and it's getting some work on it. To make sure everything works. And of course, it rides in a Kydex sheath because I am the Kydex guy. Right on. So those are my three go-to knives. Thank you, Mike. All right, well, as you've seen already, my first choice for the big knife is an overland machete. But because I, as Scooter has often said, I am horrible with things, so <laughs> this one, this one is made out of oh, AEBL. Oh, yes. Uh, nice. Because uh, I am really bad, and you can tell by the heavy staining that this one has already seen a fair amount of love. But Or two or three wars. Yes. Um, <laughs> But this knife is my absolute favorite woods knife. Uh, typically, if I'm going anywhere, I have this with me. And I have added a carabiner to it so that I can clip it to whatever. Got some work gloves, just because you never know. Still has the D-ring and the belt loops, so I can carry it around. Uh, this thing is awesome. Love this knife. Uh, the next two kind of vary depending on what I'm doing or where I'm going. But typically, if I've got that with me, my second knife for camp is the large powder. Because decent woods knife, surprisingly, you would think, oh, it's a kitchen knife, I don't know that. But this does mm -hmm. tons of small detail stuff, AEBL as well. Um, but then it transitions over into the kitchen really well. You can cut all your food, your steak, whatever. Yeah. This thing is awesome. Very underrated as a woods knife. Love this knife. Nice and thin. Yep. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yep. And if it's somewhere where I really only am going to have one setup, backpacking, whatever, then I go with the GNS. Also an AEBL because, well, you know. <laughs> you don't clean your knives. I don't clean my knives. I don't take care of myself. So. Uh, but this one is a little bit thicker. It's 530 seconds. 
AEBL, but absolutely love this knife. As you yeah. should, you helped design it. I did help did design, design this knife. So. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a great knife. It is a great knife. Yeah. We've sold tons and tons of them. Yeah. yeah, when LT sits you down at the kitchen table and says, tell me what makes the perfect knife for you, and then he magically draws it for you, you, you kind of <laughs> have to carry it. Yeah, it, it worked out really well. Mm -hmm. So those are our, our big three of our of the LTWK knives that we like. Now, we're knife guys. I own tons of other knives. We all, we all I got, do. I got Essies, <laughs> I got Bark Rivers, I got Bucks, I got Swiss Armies, all that stuff. Now, mm -hmm. if I had to carry, if I had the option, or I, if I couldn't carry one of our knives, I think the knife that I would carry is an SE3. And I have an SE3 that Jeff Randall gave me years ago. Mm -hmm. I would I would carry that knife. I think it's a great knife. I think it's a great company, great people. That that would be kind mm -hmm. of my non LTWK one knife got to carry. Uh, in a folder, gosh, it's got to be a Swiss Army knife. Mm -hmm. And I like the one hand. Um, oh, what were they called? The one hand trekker. Trekker, yeah, the one hand trekker, and I got the Army model. Yeah. yeah. So I think in a Swiss Army you knife would be like that. Is that what I'm hearing here? So like, I don't think this is a Trekker. Uh, but it's very close. That's if it's the not, rescue yeah. knife. Yeah. This is a Swiss Bianco version. But right. Yeah. But basically, it's very, very similar to that. I like that knife yep. quite a bit. Ditto. So I'd say an SE3 in one of those would be my uh, non-LTWK go-thrus. Mm -hmm. what, what are you thinking? Uh, I've had many other brands also, of course. And um, let's see here. E either one of these or the other piece of gear I always have on me is some sort of multi tool. This particular one is a Leatherman Wave, but I've carried numerous brands. Uh, the main reason I have this one on me is because it has some one-handed opening pieces on it, and years ago I got a nice leather sheath for this and a fire steel from Spen JRE. So I like to carry that contraption all around because it's all my stuff on it. So that would be maybe like one tool option if I didn't have one of our knives. As far as another fixed blade, uh, that's that's tough. I've had some Essies. I've had a bunch of their models. I like those a lot. Um, that's tough. I don't know. You know what is a good all-around fixed blade is a plain old K-bar. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're neat. Hard to break. Easy to sharpen in the field. It's got a guard on it. I could use the heck out of that all day long. Yeah, good choice. Yeah, that would be a mine. Hmm. Well, I'm there with you on the multi-tool option. I like my Leatherman as well. Mm -hmm. I have the rebar here oh, that rides yeah. in my little mag pouch there. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like other folders that aren't multi-tools, I'm really, I've really been enjoying my Benchmade Bug Out, and this is the OD green one. Take it's it. a really nice, lightweight, solid knife. Great Super for light. EDC, yeah. Yeah, that's They're fun. Super I, I like them. It is a cool Miss piece. But I have a I like the thin there. design, right. the real thin yeah. profile. Yeah. If you drop this in the woods, forget yeah. it. Bye. I uh, hopefully we'll see this thing. Yeah. <laughs> but it does have a lanyard hole, so you could always put some like yep. nice reflective high paracord, vis paracord yeah, on there. Yeah. But yeah. I have some in the truck I could hook oh. you up. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, but, that's uh, that's real nice. For fixed blade, I don't know. Yeah, it is tough to, nice. to talk about fixed blades that aren't ours because... There's a lot of companies that are making great stuff. I no know, doubt. but no, I, know. I guess it's sort of like a muscle memory thing. Like, I've not only liked what we've made, but I've used it for so long that I'm so comfortable with it. It's really tough to say. Um, I think my very first fixed blade knife was uh, one of the leather stacked handle case hollow ground uh, knives. And... I, I still like mm. that knife. I think just because that it was, was my first. Did you figure it was like ten ninety five maybe or? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Double it was the that. double X stuff. So yeah. Hey man, when I was a kid, the leather stack that. stuff. That was it, cool. it is very comfy. Oh, I liked them. I liked yeah. them a lot. So I, I guess I'd have to go with that if I absolutely couldn't have one of our knives. How about you, Sam? A uh, knife that's not ours. For a folder, you're probably gonna have to help me with this because I don't remember what it's called. I got it off you a long time ago. That that Spyderco with the tan scales. Oh, I don't it's what an Endura it was, Four. Yeah. But I carried it for a year, year and a half. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that knife thoroughly. That would probably be Spyderco makes a great product, man. That would probably yeah, be stuff, the uh, no the folder. Obviously, just like everybody else, I carry a multi tool. But unlike everybody else, it is not a Leatherman. 
it's not on me right now, it's over there, <laughs> is an SOG. I know these guys don't tend to like those, but hey. I, I think they're cool. It is fantastic for pulling the rivets out of Kydex. Oh, right on. Fantastic. I mean, that, you got a user-specific use for I did. it, and you love I what you I bought it got. specifically yeah. for that, and it has been incredible. You know, the only reason I like these more than those is because right now, I don't think SOG makes it where you can replace the no, wire cutters. They don't. Yeah. If they that can do be nice. because I am terrible at messing up my wire cutters, I will try to cut through things that I definitely shouldn't. Mm -hmm. and but I can cut through a penny. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> as, Great tool. As for a fixed blade, uh, I don't know what the model was again, but my dad gave it to me a long time ago. He got it, I think, with you and your dad. The buck knife. Oh, with yeah. the green rubber handles. Yep. I know what you're talking about. Not sure what model I don't it know was. what the model number what is. is I think it's one of their hunter. It's it's got a injection molded green handle. I actually have mm -hmm. that knife. Mm -hmm. I think it has um, saw teeth on the back of it. It does. Doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. I that carried cool. that for a long time, time when I too. first started hunting. Years and years ago. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Yeah, good piece. Those would probably be the three if I couldn't carry one of ours. Right. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Hey. Mike. Uh, folders, easy choice for me. I'm an Emerson guy, so got to go with the Emersons. Uh, huge fan of the Wave so. feature. Love the way that they do the G10 on those. So uh, typically awesome in the line. shop, I've got a CQC10 uh, for you know Sunday go to meeting. I have a Rendition SF that I carry. Uh, obviously, multi tool guy. Love my multi tools. Um, I am Super Tool 300 Leatherman. So I. I the big one. The big one. And a big rebound. For no other reason than I love the fact that they are legitimate tools. That is a real set of pliers, a real screwdriver, yeah. real tools. That's the one you carry in the center of your back. Yep. And <laughs> it has repaired many a Land Rover. And it took down a hoist once. It took down a hoist yeah. once. Uh, <laughs> Leatherman has a great warranty. I have broken a few of them, and they have always stood behind their product. Uh -huh. So I will always have a Leatherman. Uh, for a fixed blade that isn't ours, and this is going to sound like cheating, but the Nordsmith Canteen. Great knife. It's a great knife. It's very it's well designed. Fantastic design. And we made it. Yes. <laughs> and we make it. It is awesome. Uh, definitely, knife, but I would definitely call that out as cheating. But yeah. I agree with you. Uh, I agree. Uh, the design is great, uh, yeah. and it's one of those knives that can transition between hardwoods use, camp kitchen, mm -hmm. and not feel out of place in any one of those. Plenty of blade, plenty of belly, right. AEBL. Yeah. Uh, so well, David's a great designer. He is a great designer, and he put it. a ton of thought into that knife. Oh, yeah. And That's it's a fantastic, matter of fact, it was on the cover of Knives Illustrated. Yeah. It was so well thought out. Uh, that <laughs> people, was very impressive. People seem yeah. to really appreciate it. I would not feel do. bad spending money on it, like my own money on that knife. Oh, heck no. Yeah. Great knife. Yeah. Didn't Ethan Becker give it the thumbs up? Yeah. 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 He liked the thing, right? He liked it a lot, too, yeah. So there are a lot That's of great companies one. and a lot of great knives out there. Um, mm -hmm. None of us really kind of fell into the slip joint though. So if if you know, I was a I was a Queen mm -hmm. fan for years and years and years. Sadly, they they are no longer around. I was a D2 single blade trapper with bone jig stag. You know that I I love that knife. I still have that knife made by Queen. I love that thing as a slip joint. I, I was I mean I can't even today. There's a, a great slip joint makers out there, but man, I'd get an old queen. Yeah, I really, I really do love the Great Eastern. Knives. All the Gex are awesome. And like all their yeah. different lines and stuff. Um, some of their jig bone things, I really I, enjoy I, the Stockman patterns. I have what you're uh, describing right back there in the truck. It's a canoe model. It's got the two blades. Mm. It's queen cutlery, jig bones, and a leather pocket slip sheath. Aren't those awesome? It's They're nice. Great. They are. They are <laughs> great knives. Nice. Yeah, it's very nice. No doubt about it. Same well, I, you I up my, on slip so, joints. I never really dabbled much yeah. in the folders. It, when, For me, the slip joints are just, and I'm going to sound like a bear, barbarian when I say this, but they just seem too delicate to me. And I, and I know that that's you know a mostly mental thing, but I always just feel like when you you flip it out and you feel that knife engage. It's just a walk and talk. It's yeah. awesome. Well, it's definitely not a fixed blade. No. It, it doesn't fill that niche. But when, you know, when you're doing other things like opening boxes or right. you know, things like that, like stockman patterns that have the multiple blades, yeah. you're always able to keep something razor sharp on one yeah, of those. Yeah, I've had sod busters. I've had, you know, yeah. 
cases. I've carried and... slip joints for years, man. But they're a great use of knife. And again, mm -hmm. it's just like anything else. They have their place. You, you can't use them as a screwdriver. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can it's try. It's not a multi-tool. <laughs> it's right. not a multi-tool. Um, but the yeah. Tolling Oak Lodge with it. But I think uh, I, 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 a good slip joint is always something to keep around the house. What about uh, what about tacky cool knives? Knives that are really, you know, uh, like straight up honest to goodness tactical, tactical only, not bushcraft, not yeah, you know, not anything no. else. Do you guys? Then, then I go with the Emerson. Emerson stuff. I've had a few of those. And tactical, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Faster Fuller, than a Emerson, fix Spartan. See, I, I, years ago, I oh. got, a, I think it's an Elf White's Design Benchmade. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, those are what was nice. that? Uh, ATS-34 yep. is the blade. Yeah, yeah. It's an old knife. I mean, it's That's probably cool 30 years old. Uh, I've seen that knife. But That's a very I, that, cool knife. I think for me, like if you're saying tactical, it, ha it would be that. Yeah. I like that knife a lot. I think I have a, a, an old one, a Blackie Collins Design Boot Knife. Oh, I mean, uh, was that like a, a dagger kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Had the, you know, your little leather sheath with the metal clip and right. the one snap over. I still have it somewhere in the house. It's, it's what old. What was the handle on that? that was those an aluminum thing? No, yeah. this one was injection molded rubber. Okay. Mm. Uh, pretty, I think it was his design. I could be mixing it up with another knife. But Them big that suckers was, for the Microtex. I, I really like those. And I, I was very fortunate Switch someone blade? actually gave me one. Yeah, one of yeah, the yeah. Uh, OTF knives, uh, oh, a Trudon. Okay. And, uh, man, the fit and finish is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I, I know for those Switch blades, I'm a little bit of a nerdy DP on those old Italian kind of yeah, things. Yeah, those are very cool. <laughs> About those five years ago, cool. I went to a knife show in Toledo, and there was a guy there that had a whole display case of them. And he had some stag ones. And he let me sit down behind his booth and open the boxes and hand pick. And I, I, I must have opened 20 boxes. <laughs> hand pick my stag. Now, I never carry it naturally. It was just like a collector's thing. But it's just, man, how can you not like yeah. those old Italian looking switch blades? Yeah. There's a little bit of cheesiness there, but still. Cool. It's definitely like its own genre. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. very cool, though. I mean, knives are knives. We love them all. Right? Oh, heck yeah. There, there's a lot of machetes. As long as it cuts. <laughs> uh -huh. As long as it cuts. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of great machetes out there that I haven't owned yet, you know, and got the opportunity to, to mess with. But, and, and like um, hunting and field dressing, things like that, man, there's so many great pieces. There I got are. some Bark Rivers that uh, I really like. I can't think of some of the names right now, but man, there's some great using them. I like them a lot. Yeah. There was a PB&J, uh, another knife company, mm -hmm. that... Uh, I felt it was like one of those really great hunting knives like that as well. It's just, the, you know, if you can imagine it, it's likely that someone is making it and trying it. You know, with with all the different steels that we've been lucky enough to, to have an opportunity to, to mess with, not just making ourselves, but other things out there. It's like uh, my competition color and M4. Oh my gosh, how, how can you not like that steel? I mean, it's amazing. No, that's hot rod so. stuff for sure. Yeah. For yeah sure. So we're living in a good time right now. Plus, we get to, to make knives and have fun. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, although we make our, our our knives and we do carry our own knives, we still are knife guys. We still like other stuff. I got boxes full of knives at home from slip joints up to, to big choppers. And I do have some other machetes at home. Uh, some interesting shapes that I've gotten over the years that you just kind of put them down, look at. And that's really cool. I use it here and there. So yeah, man, about, guys are nice guys. How about something like that? I have a oh, very and, favorite Grandster's Brooks yeah. uh, hatchet. That's my kind of go-to. I go use to. a ton. Yeah. It's the sharpest axe hatchet thing that I've ever worked with. I, uh, in, in the Jeep right now, I have a Wildlife. I think that's the 12-inch handle one. Is that the Wildlife? Is that the small? same as mine? Yeah, is that? I that? think so. Okay. Or the Scout? And then the, the Forester, it's about yeah. this big. That's what I carry uh, in my recovery gear box, both yeah. Granford Brooks. I Man, really I love that. I really love those stuff. Granford Brooks. Yeah. In fact, uh, I love it a little too much some days. And I did something <laughs> silly earlier. I shouldn't have been doing. I freely admit it. But yeah, sharp, sharp <laughs> axes. I was a huge axe guy. I had them all. The Granford Brooks, the Wetterlings, the Councils. Huge axe guy. The Holtz Brooks, too. Yeah, yeah, Holtz Brooks. Yeah, had one. a couple of those. But... Mm -hmm. Since we've developed the Overland Machete, got rid of them all. Really kind. 
it's that's the knife I use. It is fun to use the Overland machete for just about everything. I mean, it it is its own tool. You know, this this is a good opportunity. Like we were talking about a bunch of different sized knives, and we're talking about axes. Kinda on the same idea of a pistol, a shotgun, and a rifle. Exactly. Yes. Like a slip joint. Man, it's great if you use it within its confines of what is good for. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. But if you take a pistol and you got a thousand yard elk and you're carrying good luck. A, a small thirty eight pistol. Only, only Hickok forty five is going to hit that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you're <laughs> nah, not going to have. I think he'd even look at that one and be like, mm, <laughs> nah. But the sad part is, you don't, you don't want to blame the gun because you're using it in the wrong application. Sure. Same thing with a yeah, shotgun. Yeah, yeah. You know, using it in the wrong application, it's not going to perform for you the way it should be. So that'd be like a machete when you're trying to sit there and cut your cheese at lunch. Boy, you're going to, you'll probably do it. No, but, but it'll cut the heck out of some carne asada. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're probably going to do it, but you're probably not going to love it. So if, if you use your knives in context and, and find those sizes, and I think that's why we talked about the three that we would carry, and, and, and a lot of us had yeah. those different size ranges there within what we're doing. Yeah. And then, you know, there's tons of different pieces of wisdom that have, you know, worked their way down through history where it's like, you know, you can use a big knife for a small job but not a small knife for a big job. And, you know, that's true to a degree, but then in certain instances using a big tool like that can get really, really awkward. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you can only have one thing, I would probably lean towards a that, little bit That's bigger why tool. this medium sized knife is fantastic for everything. It's sort oh, of a Goldilocks yeah, zone. Now. Yes, yeah. it is. It's the same for my this GNS. If I can only have one, it would be that one. But it, it also goes back to your skill level, and your skill level is developed yeah. by dirt time. How much time you put behind your knives. I mean, you can take yeah. a Scandi and probably slice cheese thinner than a guy that's using some other you knife. Can, if you, you if that's what you go to, man, and you really know how to use it. I mean, look in the four-wheel drive world. How many guys have you seen can go out there with a you know, four-wheel drive that's not locked and a, a bone stalker work, almost? Yeah. Work all day long. Trusted mm -hmm. around the globe. From survival to camping to everyday carry. Lifetime warranty. Quality is in our name.